The long walk to water weaves together the stories of two young people, both of whom are from southern Sudan. We first meet 11-year-old Naya. It is 2008, and she spends her days fetching water for her family. Every day, Naya travels back and forth from her village to the pond, not once but twice. Next, we meet Salva, also 11 years old, but the year is 1985. He sits in the schoolhouse, not far from his family's village. At the sound of gunshots, Salva flees into the bush. War between the government and the rebels has reached his village. He walks for hours with others who are fleeing and joins a group from his village, Laun Ariak, but his family is not among them. Soldiers lead them to the rebel camp. Salva, forced to join the group of women and children, spends the night in a barn. When he wakes up, the others have gone and he is alone. A woman from Salva's tribe, the Dinka, befriends him. Four days later, she prepares to leave and will not take Salva with her. Strangers approach who are Dinka, but Salva's family is not among them. As we alternate back and forth between stories, we learn that Naya's family must move to a camp near a lake for the dry season. It is a three-day journey from her village. Their tribe, the Newer, fight with the rival Dinka tribe over the land near the lake, so it is too dangerous to live near the lake year-round. Every day for five months, Naya digs for water in the lake. Her father and Ep, her brother, hunt, hoping not to encounter men from the Dinka tribe. When Naya's sister, Akir, becomes sick, Naya and her mother travel with her to the nearest medical clinic, a several days walk away. Akir receives medicine and recovers, but her sickness, the nurse tells them, came from the water, and now Naya's family must boil their water to destroy the germs. When we return to Salva, he has been walking for weeks. He meets Buxa, from the Jurchol tribe, who leads the group to a beehive. With his energy renewed from honey and beeswax, Salva continues walking and meets Mariel. <laughs>